Hello, hello, I am back. And now we're going to talk specifically about what is ancestral money trauma. So I will pull this up. All right, so what is ancestral money trauma? First, I'm just going to invite you to take a breath. Just notice how does your nervous system feel? How does your body respond when you see this image? If it is anything but just like ease, chillness, neutrality, chances are you have a bit of money trauma clogged up in your system. I know that I still do, even though I'm teaching this stuff. So ancestral money trauma really refers to the visceral responses, so the reactions that happen in our body, and the financial loop, specifically negative financial loops that can occur in your life when someone in your lineage, A, has been denied access to money, where there has been chronic systemic stress related to accessing money, resources, wealth, abundance, et cetera, or when someone has in your lineage has engaged with theft or misuse of money, has prevented other people from having access to financial well-being or resources, has extracted or exploited those things of somebody else's labor. I'm gonna invite you to take a breath. So what does it actually look like? There are two ways that it manifests. One is repeating the patterns that have occurred in our lineage. And two is attempting to heal our ancestors' trauma. And if you haven't watched the first video, I encourage you to go back and listen to what family constellation therapy is about. But really what it's about is remembering that our ancestors don't need us to heal their wounds for them. What our ancestors need is for us to be well and joyful in our own life path. So a couple of the things or ways that this manifests specifically. One, we may go through cycles of feast and famine, right? So it's like, we're really, really well for a moment and then something crashes. And we go through these loops because a lot of us have families that have gone through cycles of feast and famine. And so what it can be for you, if you're like struggling with this pattern, why is that I can't get out of this? It may be that your nervous system is attached to and associated with the patterns that your lineage has lived through. And so you keep repeating it. The second one is sometimes we self-sabotage our financial well-being. We come to a certain point and then we're like, no, 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 I'm not allowed to have more. It's not good for me to have more. And that can be linked to so many different reasons. It really is specific to each person's family, community, et cetera. Sometimes it's related to a sense of worth. I'm not worthy of having more than what I've historically had. It's not safe for me to have more than I've historically had. Or, and this I'll talk a little bit about more later, it can be if I have more than what my community has historically had, I will be betraying them. And so it's not a good idea for me to do that. Sometimes we hoard and worry when we genuinely, genuinely, genuinely have enough. We're afraid to spend it. We're afraid to use it. We're afraid to put it back into circulation. One of the things about living in an aligned relationship with money is that we're generally, um, genuinely welcome to letting it be in flow. Sometimes we receive and sometimes we give, and that can be a safe thing. But if we haven't healed some of our trauma, we stockpile and stockpile and stockpile, even though that's not necessary and we never really get to enjoy our life. <clears throat> And then the last one, and you know, this kind of ties into the earlier one of self-sabotage and feast and famine, is we can live in chronic denial of letting ourselves have access to money. And this can be because A, we've come from a lineage that has really exploited people, has exploited um, labor and the use of money. So we feel like we don't want to be part of that. Or we really feel like the only way to honor our ancestors is to live in the same degree of poverty, difficulty, suffering that they lived in. This idea that if I have more than those who came before me, I will actually be betraying my people. So I'm going to pull that down. I think that's the end of that slideshow. Let's check. Oh, gosh, there's more. Hang on. Let me go back in. Okay, so what are we doing when we heal ancestral money trauma is we're really, again, remembering that people don't need us to do their work. And then when we let go of the baggage that isn't ours to carry, we can really live in financial flow with our well-being. We can receive abundantly. We can also share abundantly, and we can trust that the system will be well. So 
going to pull this down and again, ask the same two questions. One, what resonated? And two, what are you going to do about it? The Healing Money Trauma Program starts very soon. Applications are now open. We'll close when we're at capacity, which for this round is 25 participants. I hope that you've enjoyed this and I look forward to seeing you there.